Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. In August 2023, Huawei suddenly released the Mate 60 Pro mobile phone. The Kirin 9000S chip equipped with it was like a slap in the face of the United States, and it also circumvented the US technological blockade. The White House may not have expected that the chip cut, that lasted for seven years, would become a catalyst for the rise of China's chip industry. The golden blockade chain, high-end design, photoresist, and lithography machine of the United States, Japan, and the Netherlands did not crush China, but instead reshuffled the global chip market. In November 2024, the United States upgraded its chip ban on China, requiring TSMC and Samsung to cut off the supply of chips above 7 nanometers. When the knife went down, the most injured were American companies. Qualcomm's orders in the Chinese market plummeted by 30%, and Intel's net profit was directly halved. China cut off $350 billion in imported chip orders, turned around and gave SMIC 170 billion yuan, and opened three wafer fabs in a row. The United States wanted to strangle China's neck, but ended up blocking the cash flow of its own companies. In 2024, China's chip imports will decrease by 42% compared with 2020 while SMIC's 28 nanometers production capacity will increase by three times, directly eating up TSMC's share in the mature process market. Huawei will release the Mate 70 at the end of 2024, and the yield rate of the Kirin 9020 chip equipped with it will exceed 90%, and its performance will be comparable to Apple A18, completely tearing apart the label of China cannot make high-end chips. The United States misjudged China's chain reaction and forced domestic substitution to accelerate by cutting off supply, but instead allowed China to establish a complete industrial chain from design to manufacturing. Just like when the high-speed rail was blocked, China took 10 years to go from a student to a teacher, and now the chip industry is copying the same script. Chinese chip companies survived and snatched the pricing power in the global mature process market. While the United States was still struggling with the 3 nanometers process, Qin Kahida and Nansha Wafer cut the price of 6-inch silicon carbide wafers from $1,500 to $500, directly forcing the stock price of American silicon carbide giant will speed to plummet by 96% and close its domestic factory overnight. The price of North Huachuang silicon carbide crystal growth furnace is $2 million, only half of similar equipment in Europe and the United States. The etching machine of SMIC has won 25% of the global market, and even Samsung has become a customer. The cost of industrial electricity is only one-third of that in Europe and the United States which makes the cost of each chip in Chinese wafer factories 40% lower than that of TSMC. 23 12-inch wafer factories have sprung up in China, with a monthly production capacity of more than 1 million pieces. By 2027, China's market share in mature processes above 28 nanometers will reach 39%, while the United States is still arguing over whether to subsidize Texas instruments to build a factory. When China makes chips into industrial products, the high-profit bubble in Europe and the United States will be punctured. The once arrogant chip giants are now queuing up for relief. Intel laid off 12,000 employees, and its stock price fell by 70% in three years. ST Microelectronics net profit plummeted by 63%, and it closed its European factory in tears. Germany's XFAB was even worse, forced by China's low prices to switch to an outdated 8-inch production line, which is equivalent to returning to feature phones from the era of smartphones. 
Companies did not lose to technology, but to China's cost pricing power. The advanced process monopoly that the United States is proud of was cracked by China in two ways. SMIC used the multiple exposure technology of the DUV lithography machine to make 7 nanometers chips, and the cost was only one third of the EUV process. Huawei's chip stacking technology used mature processes to create equivalent 5 nanometers performance. When Chinese engineers played with 28 nanometers, European and American companies found themselves trapped in the high process cost trap. During the visit of U.S. Secretary of Commerce Raimondo to China, Huawei suddenly pre-sold Mate 60 Pro, and the whole network watched the embarrassment of ineffective sanctions, Bill Gates' prediction three years ago that sanctions will only accelerate the rise of Chinese chips, was made into an emoticon package, and went viral among Silicon Valley engineers. While the United States was still struggling with EUV lithography machines, the two-dimensional bismuth-based transistors developed by Peking University were 40% faster than 3 nanometers silicon chips and did not require lithography machines at all. They are expected to be mass-produced in 2026. RISC-V open-source architecture has won 60% of the global IoT chip market and Huawei's Open Harmony system has installed more than 500 million units. China controls 90% of the world's gallium, 80% of germanium and 70% of graphite exports, all of which are key materials for chip manufacturing. The United States sanctions China's lithography machines. China cuts off the supply of raw materials, and ASML's EUV lithography machines suddenly become scrap metal. China uses mature processes to eat up the global industrial chip market, breaks the equipment monopoly with independent equipment, and reconstructs the technology ecosystem with open-source architecture. When American companies spent an extra $10 billion on 3 nanometers technology, China had already made money from the manufacturing industry with 28 nanometers chips. History always repeats itself. In 2018, the United States banned Xeon chips, forcing China to take the world's first place in supercomputers. In 2024, a full blockade allowed China's chip exports to exceed 1 trillion.